a very good morning to everybody this is the third day of our this third presentation season uh, in this season semester 3 students uh, of batch 2021 23 are making uh, presentations uh, and today uh, they are going to make presentation on uh, post colonial studies and in this uh, morning session uh, let me share a screen to see the list of the students who are going to make uh, presentations in this morning session okay so in this uh, morning session we will have presentations by uh, this students Uh, Janvi will read on decolonizing the self. Gandhi and Fano uh, on violence and agency. Uh, you need to check your title. Fano should be capital F. Uh, violence capital V. Uh, in the title, we have suggested this several times, and we have also told that be careful so that we don't have to make such comments while the things are going live. So decolonizing the self S also should be capital title Fano F capital violence V capital. Now this mistake will get reflected in our YouTube stream, LinkedIn, Facebook, everywhere, and there it will get reflected as my mistake, not your mistake, but it will now become my mistake, which on the third day also we are repeating the same thing uh, again. and that's why it is quite surprising that we are dealing with pg students or kg students that how many times the same instructions need to be given uh, uh, this presentation will be followed by zil on the subaltern brown women failure of bollywood cinema uh, after that khushboo will read on a symbolic reading of wide saragaso sea after that mayuri will read on women slavery and the problem of freedom in wide saragaso sea uh nehalba will read on fo by j m oitz after that nidhi will make presentation on racism in wide saragaso sea in this title in in i can be small but in wide saragaso sea w has to be capital w has to be capital so nidhi you also need to correct this uh, 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 thing uh nilay will read on the future of post colonial studies Uh, Nirav on symbols, allegory, and motives of post-colonialism uh, by Fo uh, in Fo by Jaim Koizzi, and finally Vachalta's presentation on White Saragasso Sea and Caribbean history will be there. Okay? Uh, uh, all the presentations by the students are submitted in Google Classroom, and through uh, this uh, Google Classroom, they will make their presentations, which will be streamed live uh, also. uh the live streaming uh, uh, is also put on this uh, website from where all the previous days presentations are also made available here so the presentation the first day then the second day presentations are there and finally uh, today's uh, uh, live streaming is going on live here and this is the afternoon a uh, evening session which will be lived here so that is where the things are documented on this particular uh, website students are evaluated by teacher on this rubric uh, wherein their subject knowledge organization of their ideas their verbal skills in terms of elocution art of clear speaking uh, the mechanics of writing uh, pronunciations uh, grammatical error that is judged here in mechanics of uh, writing uh, in non verbal skill their eye contact body language and enthusiasm will be judged uh, in last two column research where originality or arguments being presented how are they connected with the original sources and whether everything is presented through mla style documentation or not on this parameters uh in google classroom through this rubric teacher will be making the evaluation of the students and uh, all the students will be doing peer and self evaluation of the oral presentations also so they are given an online form on which they are 
uh, making their uh, peer and self uh, evaluation uh, also so uh, so far uh, this is how you all have made the evaluation in the first two days of the presentation uh, you all have given your feedback also which you are also able to see uh, when you submit your link you also get uh, uh, to see uh, that how it is going on we are happy to see that this time we don't have mistakes in multiple uh, evaluations so uh, exactly 50 50 percentage the chart shows uh, perfect number uh, of the thing otherwise normally somebody is doing two times or three times uh, and some errors tend to happen we hope that uh, remaining three days also you will be evaluating without any uh, simple mistakes and this is how uh, you are so far evaluated uh, this chart reflects that where do you stand in terms of uh, the points given by your classmates your peer and self evaluation reflects the things uh, are there so this is how you can every day keep a, a watch on how you are doing uh, or what is your level of performance uh, in in comparison to your class can also be seen in this context here there too. okay so uh, uh, let us now start our uh, session for the day and uh, let us start with the first presentation so janvi you can come and start with your presentation good morning today third day presentation and uh, my topic is uh, decolonizing the self gandhi and fanon on violence and agency this is my personal details <coughs> fanon friends fanon uh, born on the i uh, born on the island of uh, martinique under a french colon uh, colonial rule friends Omar Fanon uh, was one of the most important writer in back Atlantic theory in a age of anti-colonial uh, colonial liberation struggle. He work uh, drew on a wide area of poetry, psychology, philosophy, and political theory, and its influence across the global South has been wide, deep, and including. In his lifetime, he published two key original works: "Black Skin, White Mask" in 1952, and "The Virtues of the Earth" in 1961. Collection of essays: "A Dying Colonizing" and "Toward the African Revolutions," uh, post uh, post Milgram, published in 1964. Around the uh, protein of a radical. Uh, radi uh, Radical uh, thinker in Morton, moving from the Caribbean to Europe to North African, Sub-Saharan Afri African, and transforming his thing at each stop. The uh, 
the uh, 2050 collection of unpublished writing eretic sure of relations it uh, liberty while surely expand our understand uh, understanding of the origin and in collect uh, contact of phenon thinking <clears throat> A uh, phenon engaged uh, to fundamental issues of the days language, affect, sexuality, gender, race, and races, real, uh, religious, social formation, time, and many others. He impact uh, immediate upon arrival in uh, Algeria while in 1953. He was appointed to a position in a, a state uh, sightry at the Billet uh, Joint Villa Hospital. His uh, <coughs> uh, practitioners in the Algeria revolution, uh, revolutionary struggles uh, started uh, his think from uh, theories of blackness to a wider, more ambitious theory of colonization. Anti colonial struggle and vision for the post colonial culture and society. Fanon published in academic gen uh, journals and revolutionary newspapers. Translating is a ridiculous vision of anti-colonial struggle and decolonization for a variety of endurance and geographics. Where there, whatever young academic in Paris, a member of the Algeria Nation Liberalization Fund, ambassador of Ghana from the Algerian pro relations government or revolutionary participant at conference across Africa. Following uh, Nikon's at uh, the short battle with uh, Likuma uh, Fanon was a uh, transport to the Persat, Ma uh, Maryland for the treatment and he died at a National Institute for Health uh, uh, Fancy on December 6, 1961. His work, The Problem of uh, Blackness, Algeria, Black Africa, the wedges of the earth, the, uh, the case study, legacy and influence. Two colonization, Gandhi and uh, Fanon, the two anti-colonial uh, figure, uh, Mohandas Gandhi uh, and uh, friends Fanon's are uh, not uh, worthy in that they integrate this complex and of through uh, relations between uh, decolonization, violence, and agency. They share the constitutions uh, <coughs> uh, of the colonial structure, uh, structure that understand uh, its deep influence of the self-protection of colonized. And the <coughs> and, and aim in, uh, on those uh, previous years, effect of uh, contrast uh, between uh, phenomenon all uh, new humanities, though ridiculous uh, political actions. These uh, uh, essays focus on their uh, point of uh, this verges the most effective way to achieve these common goals. While uh, Gandhi was an actual uh, prefect uh, committed to uh, ahimsa, non-violent restings as the uh, machines uh, for achieving India's independence. Fanon's called for uh, violence in the decolonization of Algeria. A comparative study for the disparate uh, philosophies and the two instant uh, uh, Fanon's theory of violence effectively uh, modulates anti colonial support. But the new Algeria society, in constructed ironically, repeated a colonial pe uh, power. Uh, Gandhi influence of uh, Indian nation building by contract <coughs> inspired at attempt to transfer this uh, dimension. Although the uh, violence of uh, uh, partition and Gandhi existence uh, force uh, the question the realize, uh, realism of the idea of humanity can reveal in itself peacefully. At the art creation of the search of return of a, a financing. Fanon and Gandhi on violence in decolonization. Uh, in the two, uh, the star of decolonization, uh, Europe and five, uh, five countries uh, with uh, Europe colonization, and another country is Africa, 
ओशेनिया अमेरिका बाय टू सब्जुकेटेड यूरोप ब्रिटिश एंड रशियन एम्पायर एंड वन हंड्रेड एंड सेवन सेवेंटी एट कंट्रीज टू द इंडिपेन्डेंस ऑफ द यूरोप सब्जुकेटेड द इन द ब्रेकिंग ऑफ द मेथड डाउन इन टू द सिम्प्लिफिकेट डिस्कोमेटी नेशंस डिकोलाइजे देम सेल्स either do violent revolutionary or non uh, violent resistance both methods have their supporter and political uh, prophet, uh, philosophers ready to extol the virtue of their chosen path of uh, liberty one of the most uh, pre- uh, prominent uh, supporters of violence who the psychiatrists uh, and uh, revolutionary friends fenons while those he uh, for uh, on non violence often read around the lessons a lower and uh, uh, pre fsd mahatma gandhi the two men are not world apart from each other in their outlook on life both grow up under the rule of uh, colonial power fenon in a french controlled uh, marine tunki and the gandhi in uh, british uh, control india both men uh, ex, uh, both men experienced uh, discriminations uh, throughout their lives due to the color their uh, the skin despite being uh, both being highly educated in well uh, represented uh, professions finally both men recognized the needed for colonized people to reject the culture of their colon colonial master and embers their in uh, in deguised uh, heritage at uh, this uh, despite their similarities fenon and the gandhi arrived at a very uh, different uh, conclusion between the uh, grounding uh, the path to independence for the colonized people of the world Uh, their differences centered not just on the effectiveness of violence uh, versus non violence in decolonization both methods have triumphed and failed over the decades uh, fenon and gandhi also asked themselves if, if the use of violence in pursuit of independence was a legitimate could it be the justice as can be seen and their writing we two men give a very uh, different answer which focus with the question the fenon uh, uh, write the uh, rages of the earth in his uh, most famous work the rages of the earth fenon state decolonization in always a violent uh, femonal it is the complete uh, uh, up ending of the social order and the total replaced men of the colonial class with the native uh, of the womb the uh, of the womb island of the nation truly belong uh, he is a friendly understanding as fenon put it cannot uh, confuse the goal give the curriculumates of colonizing in which the colonizer see the colonized as the subhuman uh, broadly and on evil america is the closest plan that the violent re- uh, removal of the colonial system is also according to the fenon necessary for the mental health and uh, well beginning of the native he state when the native is confronted with the colonial order of things he find he is in a state of uh, premen tensions the subhuman characterization of the native by the colonial power of damaging to the mental health and in degus a people for fenon overthink the colonial order though the violence extract the humanity of the native and uh, solidarities for the confidence in that humanity therefore there uh, agrees that the use of violence in decolonization is not just uh, in belief uh, but he is the fully justified another side a gandhi and his hind swaraj gandhi it was not violence that uh, signified that the virtue of the native but suffering uh, uh, willingness uh, to suffer the cues to accept uh, uh, physic- uh, physical can and uh, mental harm in the 
face of the observed without resp uh, responding uh, to the same tactics uh, was the best course uh, to show the world in interviews people are not subhuman and uh, both capable and describing of the swaraj or self rules a gandhi state in hind swaraj or indian home rules in uh, the force of the love and pity his influence greater than the force of arms there is harm in the excessive the brutal force never that the or pity Uh, the gandhi to use the two uh, two method uh, uh, soil uh, soil rule and the truth rule the gandhi argue that the uh, was not colonizer itself that uh, spread in uh, in regures people of their humanity but the observes law based uh, passed by their colonizer Now he said it is a uh, contrarian uh, to our human uh, human who if you obey a law repeated to the conscience uh, such a uh, touching is also uh, to religious and uh, means a uh, civilian pass the essence uh, to this law uh, which that the best way uh, to the essence to the humanity or the native educated the masses in the uh, pursuit uh, in the independence and uh, during the colonizer to the uh, negotiating table therefore the violence in uh, the pursuit of this goal cannot be the justed in another side uh, another side gandhi his believe uh, uh, he be, uh, believe and he uh, sentence of the you can uh, governor use only so along as the remain of the governor he use of two method uh, soil force and the uh, uh, truth force after the colonize uh, india's after the colonize india to the uh, uh, to the emerge of the uh, from decolonization and rise to two community religious hindu and muslims and the partition of the majority hindu is indian and uh, another side majority muslim in the pakistan another side phenon is uh, algeria uh, uh, algeria to independent uh, colonizations and violence and uh, another is the three uh, uh, main uh, way conversation uh, between truth caste and uh, uh, and power uh, ambedkar uh, phenon and uh, gandhi so the three way conversation between uh, phenon we are ambedkar and gandhi regarding the question of truth and violence for the ambedkar and gandhi the relationship between truth and violence is understand to the relation of to the ahimsa all three thinkers right to contending uh, for the anti colonial struggle uh, for, uh, for a fan on the question is double uh, double dig uh, one of the colonizer uh, colonizing uh, tax place under the deep sh uh, shadow of a uh, uh, reason while for the ambedkar is the split uh, battle uh, seen a part of the uh, un uh, untied national nationality a struggle against the white colonization the question of caste to the post unrightly within the society struggling against against the colonized colonization and three uh, truth power and caste the so gandhi place idea of the uh, satyagraha uh, against all uh, civil uh, power in the dos world it is the fundamental problem of satyagraha that the tyrant whom the satyagrahi seek to wrest his power over his body and materially uh, possess but he can have uh, no power over his soul another side of phenon the violence of the colonial remain in the in the counter of uh, violence of the native balance each other and response to the each other in extraordinary uh, repegel or a uh, hem uh, hemi no city uh, this uh, region uh, region of the violence will be the more terrible in uh, uh, prospering uh, to the size of the implant implantations from the mother country the development of the violence among the colonized people will be uh, 
prevent to the violence expired by the dreaded colonized region another side uh, ambedkar right to uh, right to the force of as a mahatma uh, he uh, may be the trying to the spiritualism politics whether he has a uh, succeed into uh, into or not politics have a curtain uh, promulgated him a uh, politi- uh, politician um, uh, must uh, know the society cannot bear the whole truth and that he must uh, not speak uh, the whole truth he is uh, he as he is uh, speaking with the uh, truth he is not uh, bad from his uh, uh, politics and another side uh, ambedkar he is uh, be- uh, believe in idea and ahimsa he is uh, th- he is a uh, way of the buddhist he will kill to need so we kill to need our, our the our colonization ambedkar classifies with uh, what he he mean the reason uh, why the mahatma is always supporting the caste and varna because he is uh, afraid that is he observed them he will lose his place in uh, politics in his uh, Amb- ambedkar against uh, the mahatma gandhi uh, some points because he is a uh, uh, caste system in uh, uh, in the uh, independence uh, before india varna and caste and uh, he believe that uh, gandhi his caste system and varna system uh, and he all uh, in education so uh, different uh, we have the Ambed- ambedkar uh, we, uh, ambedkar and the another another side uh, for fanon and Ambe- ambedkar both uh, uh, truly can only be really grasped in uh, op- options to be a power it is uh, only the deconstruction of the rest is colonized remain of the brahmical law of exclusive uh, that the truth show for him the idea of soil then works and uh, in implement uh, to what the, uh, the body is suffering against the gandhi's idea and individuality uh, individualist uh, soil ambedkar and fenon uh, agree on behalf of the body collective suffering and demands truth of uh, acknowledge the liberalizations of that suffering anything that fell short uh, shorts of this not really uh, truly This is my work site. Thank you. Uh, Charvi, my question is, uh, do you, uh, can you please uh, elaborate the term pacifist and name any one politician nowadays who is a pacifist? now uh, nowadays in in uh, uh, politics are uh, many poli- uh, uh, politician are uh, uh, pacific in pacific uh, pacific uh, in the i think so uh, so that uh, our uh, prime minister are pac- i don't know but i just i think so pacific in nowadays so can we my question to you regarding this slides is that was it only by non violent practices have indian revolutionaries achieved uh, the freedom uh, can you relate friends when an approach in getting freedom with violence uh, non violent uh, practices have not revolutionary achieved uh, by freedom in india uh, while uh, violence over to uh, uh, freedom in india so i i'm just relate to the fashion fa- approach getting to freedom with violence to the connect to him uh, not only freedom with uh, non violence in across the violence and non violence both to freedom in india and
Good morning, everyone. My today's presentation uh, on the paper of the post-colonial studies is on the subaltern theory, the subaltern brown women, and the failure of Bollywood cinema in describing the women. This is my introduction. And in today's presentation, we are going to deal with the term post-colonial feminism. Uh, we will discuss the Simone de Beauvoir's uh, theory in the second sex which is talking about the situation and the character of a women in society. Then Gayatri, uh, Gayatri Spivak's theory on the subaltern, can, can a subaltern speak? Then uh, my uh, main topic about failure of Bollywood cinema and conclusion. Beginning with post-colonial feminist criticism, it is a response to the uh, feminism which was uh, focusing only on the women which were in Western culture and were of formal former colonies it is the third this post colonial feminist criticism is the third wave of feminism in the first wave of feminism uh, the uh, it was criticizing or looking or focusing on the in the, on the women who had the resources of education the second wave criticism was looking at the uh, uh, women which were trying to have equality with may, uh, men or males in with male society in uh, pay in pay in which they pay which they get uh, through their work and in the third then later they realize that this everything is talk, this criticism is only talking about the women which are in western culture and who are already having access to the resources and then the third wave of feminism came which uh, which uh, criticized on the account of race gender class and the long-lasting political, economic, and cultural effect of colonialism, that which looked on the brown women. We will look at the women's condition. Simone de, Simone de Bua, in The Second Sex, which was published in 1949, in the fifth chapter, she has talked about the women's situation and character. She is telling that the conditions created and practiced by men in the society are responsible for the faults and the problem of women. Uh, the product product that women is product which is uh, the product of her own situation it is not natural or not a result of her or hormones or a result of a predetermined structure of her brain and what is situation according to Bua is economic social and historical conditions created by men and the character is women's behavior and their faults the women are not given the technical training like men are given. Women are not living in a practical world. They are more uh, molded or trained to be emotional. They are not given the exposure and the experience which men are getting in the society. And a lack of all exposure and experiences is forcing women to be in household activities and mostly they stay in kitchen. The kitchen is making them uh, patient and passive. As we are working in a kitchen, we see cooking happens in a slow pace. Everything takes a long time. The things or activities be, uh, which are related to kitchen. And so the women are growing to be passive and patient. And all the ignorance and ineffectiveness are forcing the women to worship masculine heroes and uh, respect the masculine laws. There is, uh, we can also say that there is a huge world of feminine experience that is beyond the reach of men. Women is capable to fight against or compete with men, but they are not given the uh, they are not given the opportunities or spaces. The women can fight against men, but the world of women is such a huge and a huge of experiences that men cannot take the place of women so easily. And we can see in the regular world. If we uh, think if uh, our mother will not be in the house for a day, our father cannot replace her work. But if our father won't be there, the mother can go outside, she can earn, 
she can also handle the house and she can take care of us man believes in ethical values but that is only an abstract at universal level man is having their own ethical world ethical rules for an example a man is finding a woman who is virgin for marriage uh, he wishes that his wife or a friend or a sister uh, uh, stays in a type of a cage or a in an ideal womanistic way the way of life must be idle not having any of extra marital affair or any other relation before the marriage but contrary to that men are always finding other women for relationship they want their wife to be ideal but want neighbor's wife to have an affair with him so the basic idea of simon the buwa is situations created by men determines women character and that men's self interest duplicity and dominating tendencies are responsible for her faults and follies and he, uh, the uh, most famous quote from the second uh, second sex is one is not born but rather becomes a woman they are idealized since childhood and they are uh, women are asked to dream that the best life or a uh, uh, the successful life is having a being a mother and being an ideal wife the, the uh, ranjit guha uh, was one to initiate the subaltern studies project in 1982 and according to him devoid of unconsciousness and hence without an ability to make their own histories are called subaltern uh this uh, gayatri spiva uh, was one of the third world third world countries women she understood the situation of the women of a colonized countries and uh, and wrote about the women in his uh, work article can a subaltern speak he took this word subaltern uh, from the italian marxist antonio gramsci which was generally used for the people having a lower rank in the society or in the military this project was to record the record the voice of subaltern because the history was only celebrating the actions of elite class for example in the freedom fight of india's independence jawaharlal nehru gandhi bhagat everything are every one of uh, who were further in the freedom fight are recorded but the tribals or the lower uh, lower class people who got martyred in this freedom fight are not recorded anywhere and this project decided to be a voice of this subaltern uh, spivak is having few uh, three feminist stances uh, uh, the, they, they are the demonstration of the failure of the indian nationalist movement of free lower class subaltern women criticism of western feminism for neglecting class religion language and nationality difference and totalizing attempt at creating a universal feminist theory and the third is her awareness of being a third world women which she could so she could write and elaborate the situation of the women uh, we know the ideology of the society is patriarchy in that subaltern is women dominating class is men and the discourse is of gender in patriarchal society women are assigned particular roles as a wife mother daughter sister which are completely dependent on a man you can't be a mother without a father you can't be a wife without a husband or mother or a daughter without a you can't have a comparison there are necessary for the binaries women for the role binaries are needed and they are trained for uh, since childhood so this inequality in the society is naturalized in the women and they feel it's natural and don't speak up for their rights and their opportunities uh, for the colonized women they are called they are colonized in the two level by the colonialism and by the patriarchy of the society and they aren't they can't speak for them it is impossible for them to break this two uh, this to bad uh, locks be coming on their path uh, so the intellectual have argued that for the people who are not able to speak uh, uh, it's impossible for them to speak speak the one who are having an authority like the britishers or the elite class has an authority have to speak for the oppressed class 
in in the kana sabal then speak she said uh, she dealt with an issue of sati and demonstrated that both hindu hindu culture practices served to repress the voice of agency of women describing about the sati uh, as there is a quote white men are saving brown women from the brown men and with an example of sati she has elaborated that in a sati practice uh, it was because of hindu culture and we know that the white britisher uh, i forgot the name but a white person was the one to abandon or ban the sati pratha and that is where the quote came white men needed to safeguard the brown women <coughs> looking at our cinema we we saw the two quote that can it zabaltan speak can a brown women speak for herself and white men were needed uh, for saving the brown women from the men and we know that bollywood cinema is a source of entertainment but it always it has served as uh, the reflection of society it outside india or the other region where other regions and the region of bollywood it is seen as a reflection of its culture and tradition then how women were represented in it in uh, in 1940s to 60s the bollywood women, uh, cinemas were dealing with the social issues of the working class nationalist and patriot sentiments by 1970s social agenda changed into action and romance and then the new genre came genre came was about the nri films which are which are interracial films uh, the couple are interracial or the families are interracial or the indian is living in a foreign country or the foreigner is living in indian country such types of films were introduced then a mystery uh, mystery uh, this uh, pratima mystery in his article changing role of women in hindi cinema has given presence of wolf hindi cinema presents a woeful picture of discrimination and marginalized marginalized women and another quote was given by uh, ramini ram ram kisun before nri films role of women were as mother wife vamp and courtesan that is a prostitute this is how the women were depicted nri films uh, how they worked uh, they helped women to get out of the subaltern role that is of wife uh, mother vamp spivak as we quoted before also the white men were used through nri films to safeguard the black sorry brown women as we discussed the bollywood is a synecdoche of history and culture and also influential in the society for the interpretation of others uh, in the article bollywood in in the Indi indian american diaspora it is said it is a kind of cinema that has since the mid 1990s brought the nri decisively into the center of the picture for a more stable picture of indian identity to anything that can be found indigenously it is the it is the medium to examine in bollywood is a medium to examine indian culture nationalism modernity and identity uh, till now the women were having a historical Uh, life, or they were as a subject which were dominated by the men before the NRI film comes in the Bollywood. The, the the women had a role of ideal mother, ideal wife, vamp, and courtesan. The ideal mother, who were called ideal mother, subjugated and disempowered role were ideal mother. It must have three characters like sacrificing, suffering, and being silent. The example can be Mother India. in midnight children we are getting one scene where the mother is going outside to meet uh, uh, to meet his her old friend and the son or a child sees that his mother is going outside to meet another man and he is behaving very violently towards the man so the mother is leaving the role of ideal mother and now she is not as a ideal mother in the eyes of a son in secret superstar we are having a uh, a mother and a child a muslim family a mother is not is devoid is not allowed to have any social life and is having a domestic violence then to he is not ready she is not ready to leave her husband and is uh, wants to leave there for the welfare of the children and welfare for the her 
this is how the ideal women are defined in uh, defined in our bollywood movies the ideal wife the ideal wife is one uh, uh, like sita sita is a role model as an ideal wife he, uh, she should be virgin before marriage loyal and obedient to the husband and a perfect figures and martyrs to their families their grievances desires ambitions feelings and perspectives are completely missing in their scene this is how the ideal women are ideal wife are once she gets married she has to leave everything and this thing is seen in the bollywood movies in secret superstar then in kabhi khushi kabhi gham we see the wife of amitabh bachchan that that nandini raichan played played by jaya bachchan she wants uh, she had to leave uh, had to follow to be an ideal wife she had to leave her son and uh, let her him go and in the movie atras that is a karina kapoor is having that uh, uh, scene uh, in the adalat in a court room where she is defending her husband being an ideal wife another is vamp vamp is generally a negative role and she is an anti hero anti hero the third person in the married third person in the married couple uh, who comes to destroy the marriage and in atras movie priyanka chopra is playing that role and generally this is seen in the daily uh, daily uh, daily soaps of ekta kapoor and vamp has a role of taking a revenge for not let uh, for her love not being accepted by a man and a courtesan and prostitute this this character generally in the movies or in any cinematic thing are having a sympathetic uh, look because it's it's also a occupation the uh, booth uh, G- george blue booth in the article making a women from the wave is saying that a world can turn a woman into courtesan but courtesan cannot become a woman the movies are like gangubai the and the role of madhuri dikshit in devdas in gangubai uh, there is also a dialogue by alia bhat uh, that kothe wali aapke ghar ki ghar ki bahu nahi ban sakti this happens about with the prostitute and this is also reflected in our cinema the vamp and prostitute are the negative characters which are seen for a women then comes a new genre which which came recently is of nri films and this has helped to shift the orthodox orthodoxy which are seen in these four characters here now in this film a female character or a woman character is trying to find a uh, trying to marry or in a wish to marry a white man because they are getting more liberty on being in relationship with a white man this is seen in the movie the name sec uh, where the gogol is getting married to moshumi and then moshumi is leaving gogol and uh, and the re- and the reason she is giving is she is happier when she is with non indian because indian accepts a lot of thing being an idle woman <laughs> and the character of pooja in kabhi khushi kabhi gham we see that uh, which is more famous or popular as poo be after going to an uh, fo- a foreign country she is completely changing cause she is getting a new atmosphere open as atmosphere and vibration uh, now in the conclusion i would like to say that as we so that how women is constructed by simone de beauvoir and then spivak is talking about how uh, the women how the women are being subaltern and they are not having their own voice which is completely reflected in bollywood the main role of bollywood or movies is to bring out is, uh, is to give a new insight to the society so that they can change their own behavior but here bollywood is also failing in the recent time like in 1960s and 1970s to uh, to give a new look to the brown women and they are <coughs> and uh, and they are still a subaltern in a movies also but today we see that slow and steadily the things are changing the progressive moving movies like thappad pink and dil dhadakne do are coming thappad is about domestic violence but there a woman is standing for herself for only a one slap pink is a movie of whole court room where all the justifications are given that why women 
should only or why women or girls should only uh, have uh, the cage or cage of having some idealism in them and the most famous dialogue which i like from the dil dhadak ne do is between the two characters where uh, one hero is telling that mary dad mary dad ki generation tak kisi aurat ne kaam nahi kiya never fir maine aisha ko allow kiya business chalane ke liye and here they were having a talk about the fake journalism the man who said this dialogue was pointing out the other man, journalist that you now and then keep on talking about feminism and then she he uh, said this dialogue as a proof that see we are feminist and then the journalist is saying tumne aisha ko allow kiya aur use tumhari permission ki zarurat kyu hai and this way now the bollywood movies are trying to bring the new ideas which were talked or discussed by simen the bua and gayatri spivak that how women are uh, being subaltern and how they are oppressed as we we begin with the discuss of post colonial feminism this uh, theory of post colonial feminism is oftenly criticized by saying that it is breaking down the women into smaller groups to address a unique qualities and diversities that's all about my presentations these are my citations thank you Uh, as we discuss that gayatri as we discuss that gayatri spivak is belonging to the third third world countries which were be colonized and perhaps we can uh, it is my interpretation that it can the problem can be seen in a way that uh, she might be thinking or writing based on the one dimensional view that is of third world view Jill, my question is, what is your opinion towards the term boycott Bollywood? Uh, looking uh, today, we are seeing a lot of things about the boycotting the movies. Uh, I, my opinion is, every movie is uh, is is coming as a form of entertainment and is showing the variety of view. They are not telling that they are. They also give a certificate. Get the. beginning that this is not to harm anyone's emotions or anyone's sentiment then boycotting bollywood i think it's not a great thing because they are also working hard and they are making this uh, making his movies for the entertainment purpose and crores of rupees are also made uh, it might we can consider it as a uh, problem with the public that we are considering it to be a histor histor historical historical and uh, can be also say that we are thinking it is truth and movies should uh, show everything that is truth the mere purpose of bollywood or movies uh, is not to show the truth or to give a, or didactic it, it's not having a quality of being didactic it has mere entertainment as a purpose and we are learning or reading movies uh, is our way of learning we are reading movies movies are not made to read movies or to learn something from it thank you
Hello everyone. Today, uh, today our uh, third day of presentation. Um, my topic is about a symbolic reading of white sargasso sea. The use of sim uh, the use of symbolism is one of the most outstanding style in description. This presentation focuses on the symbolic techniques used in white white sargasso sea from different angles. a uh, simultaneously uh, in a detailed way and uh, somewhat systematically since one function of symbolism is to reveal the theme that is uh, in this particular novels is by dis uh, describing antony antonet's tragic childhood and marriage failure to criticize the oppression of the colonialism the the patriarchy and complement the resistant uh, spirit of the oppressed This presentation tries to classify the symbol in white sargasso sea uh, into three categories in accordance with their roles played in revealing uh, the theme, the sense of identity, the racial uh, conflicts, and the patriarchal oppression. Uh, this is the introduction about white uh, white sargasso uh, sargasso sea. Uh, white uh, sargasso sea. is a 1966 post colonial parallel novel by jean rice white sargasso sea uh, is composed with uh, inspiration from jane eyre and it has been thought of as kind of prequel to jane eyre because it describes describes the childhood of bertha mason in the early days of her marriage which are not described in uh, charlotte uh, bronte's uh, novel White Sargasso Sea uh, is about the story story of the first uh, first Mrs. Rochester Antoinette Cosway, a white Creole heiress, from the time of her youth in the Caribbean to her unhappy marriage and uh, relocation to England, caught in uh, caught in an oppressive uh, patriarchal society in which she belongs neither to the white Europeans nor the black Jamaicans. Uh, Rice novels reimagines Brown's uh, devilish uh, mad woman in the attic. A symbolic reading of white sargos uh, sargasso sea. The use of say, uh, symbols is, is to classify and, and analyze the uh, symbol in the novel in uh, accordance with their roles in in revealing the theme, illustrating uh, a complete. interpretation of the complicated racial conflict and pa patriarchy uh, operation in west indies the symbol in by uh, white sargasso sea into three categories uh, in accordance with their uh, roles uh, role play played in revealing the theme the sense of uh, first the sense of identity second the racial conflicts and uh, and the third one is the part part patriarchal operation uh, a sim first one is a symbol a revealing uh, sense of Id identity an important post colonial uh, conception meaning how we define who we are and as the process of decolonization continues the growth of national identity ident identity become highly important particular in such a geographical divided region jean rice because of her creole identity and uh, life experience alienation from self and isolation from the outside world futures her work with a sense of identity crisis for a certain individual especially one born to parent uh, of different nationalities uh, read and educated in a different country and integrated into different culture the issue of identity is of great importance and has has to be confronted confronted uh in uh, in saragossa see a symbol of a amb embarrassing situation of the heroine the geographic location and the physical pro property stands a symbol revealing the amb embarrassment of our heroine the saragossa see is an extended region where is surrounded by ocean uh, currents the middle of the north atlantic ocean Antoinette is the Saragossa Sea. Uh, that is an image image of feminine feminine searching for autonomy and identity. Although she struggles so hard, the woman never free herself for the insidious and 
invocable or uh, ten class of exploiter and the patriarchal conditioning that clung to her as to try to find her way to herself. Uh, mirror is a symbol of a pursuing, a pursuing and losing identity. A character is the novel. A novel frequently re, uh, refers to mirrors as an external tool to assert their identity, turn to them for a reassurance and compare their peer. Mirror, uh, mirrors as looking glass, glasses, meaningful uh, gazes, and clear pool of water are embo embodiments symbolizing the heroine's uh, pursuing of identity. Looking glasses is often associated with women and their relationship with the society where their social status decides their identity. In white sargassi, the physical, uh, physical mirror appears as an important symbol. In the first section of the novel, Antoinette is sent to the convert uh, after, after experience, uh, experiencing the, the damage of the plantation, uh, the death of her idiot brother, and the madness of her uh, remar remarried uh, mother without looking glass. Antoinette uh, then has the relationship with outside cut off. There, find she, uh, she, we have no looking glass in the uh, dormitory. In other sense, no looking glass in the convent uh, is to conscious uh, her identity symbol second is the symbol revealing uh, the racial conflicts uh, in jamaica three types of race the white the black and the creoles in the conflict uh, between the white and the unserved uh, native in jamaica is very server the condition of of the slaves are not better off the conflict between the white and the unserved native uh, in Jamaica is very server. Antenna, antenna, and uh, a symbol of the Creole whites. Annet is a symbol revealing racial conflicts as her tragic life is caused by the clashes between the white and the blacks, uh, the European whites and Creoles whites. Antenna, antenna uh, is. Uh, Annette, Annette is the second wife of Alexander Cosway and mistress of the dis, uh, disused plantation uh, Colibri Estate, newly been a widow. And, uh, Annette Cosway has no male protector and has no earning to support Colibri. Whites born in England are, dif are different from the white Creoles, uh, descendants uh, of Europeans who have lived in the West Indies for one more generation, Helen Tiffin explained that the white Creoles is as a double outsider uh, condemned to self-conscious, a sense of uh, inscap inscapable, uh, incapable, different and even uh, deformity in the two societies by uh, whose judgment uh, she always con uh, condemns herself. Uh, Christophin uh, Christophin is a symbol of oppressed but uh, rebellious blacks. Christophin belongs to a class is, uh, is, that is exploited and oppressed, but contrary to Annette, she is rebellious and undoubted. She is a symbol of standing for uh, the native blacks and fighting against the domination and oppression. Christophin is a uh, wedding gift to Annette. By Antonia's father, the name of Christophin is a symbolic one which indicates she is a Christ's life, uh, life figure to Antoinette. In spite, of, in spite of the fact that slavery has been abolished, uh, the oppression of the blacks li linger for uh, quite a long time, though not exactly in a form of, of uh, slavery, in the minds of the whites, the black people have always been and are uh, still a race of uh, inferiority. The superiority of the whites over the blacks in a way can uh, can be manifested uh, by their abuse of the black female bodies. Christophin and her fellows black, uh, such as Dan Daniel and Emily uh, are conscious, 
claiming mind their rights and fi fighting against the oppression their existence uh, is always and forever threat of white colonization a symbol of revealing a patriarchal oppression uh, in the ideology of patriarchy society the female is supposed to be fe feeble sub subservient re reliant and submissive uh, to the male they are always exiled at the age of the society by the dominant male sex men are regarded regarded strong rational rational and decisive decisive yet women are uh, weak internal uh, irrational and submissive obviously there uh, exists gender inequality and discrimination uh, discrimination partially uh, patriarchy is most likely to reflect a deeper expectation of formal male who is the dominance in the wide range of social relationship in white in white sargassosi uh, both the female character like antony antonette and annette christophine uh, uh, and the male character such as ross uh, ross Rochester and Daniel are also surface to surface of patriarchal system. Uh, Antoinette, a symbol of woman under pa pa patriarchy, uh, Antoinette is uh, pressed at the bottom of patriarchal system. She is the very typical symbol of patriarchal oppression as it is shown in the following aspect, financial oppression and spiritual oppression. Uh, financial uh, oppression, she she lost her uh, financial support so uh, she she may she marries uh, uh, marries married to uh, rochester uh, he, he, she cannot love uh, love uh, Ro rochester but uh, uh, she uh, because uh, uh, her father told uh, she uh, married to rochester uh, rochester a symbol of men under past patriarchy rochester is a super a superior in the uh, patriarchal system he is a victim to far his father is super uh, superior to him and th uh, the father has the son life in hand neither man nor woman could leave their bodies freely and independently under part uh, patriarchy a female uh, female social ideological system in which men by force direct pressure or through tra traditional low language determine what part shall or shall not play rochester has a choice but go to the exotic west indies to seek his fortune with a great sense of loss uh, dear father uh, she uh, Anto antoinette a down in partially and transform himself from victim into victimizer uh, thro thorn uh, thornfield hall a symbol of the stronghold of patriarchy, Thornfield Hall comes from Jane Eyre, where the de uh, depiction is used by Bront, who, who is aimed to a manner being constituted of with Gothic in a tone of the novel as a uh, novel as a whole. Uh, Thornfield uh, can literally be defined as a place where throne go, uh, throne grow. Throne uh, has a uh, uh, it's a uh, figurative meaning as uh, full of trouble and difficult difficulties so throne field conveys a strong sense of trouble mis misery or distress in gen ira it symbolizes the misery and hardship gen has uh, to come through before her ultimate happiness but uh, but to uh, antoine antoinette it turned uh, out to be her living Conclusion that uh, the symbolic technique you invite uh, Sardasosi is more free, varied, and meaningful, which plays a vital role in, in con constructing and developing the plots in the presentation. Uh, the symbols are classified into groups and accordance with the function of revealing the themes, providing a better and more, more explicit uh, uh, under understanding of the novel. Thus, the by, by virtue of symbol uh, symbolism, uh, Rice vividly uh, depicts the historical situation of the West Indies in 1830 uh, 30s when people were suffering from the bo both imperial colonies, uh, colonialism and the patriarchy, uh, rendering white uh, sargassos 
and admirable and worthy prequel uh, to uh, crawl let bronze jain iri Kushbu, my question is: In general, the mirror is a symbol of truth. Can you elaborate the mirror as a symbol of truth in respect to this novel? Yes, I, I, yes, I, uh, I, I. I i agree with this uh, mirror is a symbol of truth in this novel uh, in this novel uh, antoinette uh, antoinette and uh, uh, he, uh, and uh, her friend uh, tai tai tia uh, uh, tia uh, 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 they they both are uh, good friends but uh, after the Uh, after the uh, people uh, uh, against the uh, black uh, black people and uh, and the tire uh, uh, and, uh, and the antonio said that uh, you are said that uh, uh, niger niger the the niger people are uh, Uh, not uh, niger people are not well and uh, the uh, antonio say uh, re- and uh, uh, tayas uh, replied that uh, uh, Ni- black black niger uh, black niger better than uh, white niger and uh, uh, it uh, it uh, they, they both fr- friend but uh, Uh, after that, uh, uh, Antonia realized that, uh, uh, and uh, she, she, Uh, my question is, uh, what does the red dress symbolize in Bar Saragasisi? The red dress is a uh, symbolize for uh, uh, Antoinette. Uh, 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 his uh, uh, her her uh, husband uh, Rochester uh, Rochester. Uh, Antonio uh, uh, wear this uh, dress for uh, Rochester. hello everyone third day presentation paper name the post colonial studies and today my topic 
topic is women slavery and problem of freedom in wild sarabosa sea this is the table of content jane rees was a uh, jane rees was a, a not a much critically acclaimed for her work, work during his most of a lifetime and uh, this novel was a well uh, well read by the, some critics uh, to uh, describe the feminist view or a, a woman uh, which she was uh, describing as a victim and uh, other uh, other readers are uh, reading this novel because of the uh, one young woman who was near for the uh, near for her uh, madness about this uh, novel uh, published in uh, 1966 uh, towards the end of jen uh, uh, rees writing career was a most successful of uh, rees uh, literary work and a novel was uh, well received when it was a uh, first published uh, and it was a, a, a rewriting of uh, charlotte bronte's uh, jane eyre uh, jane uh, rees presentation of her post amnesiation uh, jamaica setting of wild sarabosa sea as a one of the despair subvert and conventional progressive conception of history that the end of slavery made a triumph of good will over vicious greed and spiritual and ethical advance of mankind in novel the lo uh, locus of uh, despondency is antony for whom the abolition of slavery act means the death of her immediate family member from antony's perspective the liberation the new english bring both rips away safety and impose a new uh, a a repressive social control as we know that uh, after the slavery act was a uh, uh after Sla slavery act that uh, uh, her uh, her neighbors and uh, uh, some uh, a group of black people burn his house and in a uh, sudden death of uh, her brother who was a uh, 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 some mental problem a woman european woman as a bounded slave is one of the most uh, pivotal of this metaphor protesting not a lack of women's right but the set of european expectation for creole uh, rees ironically borrowed her enlightenment of analogy of women subjugation and uh, chattel slavery while sarah bassosi purposefully problemized its conception of gender all women character in a rees fictions are mercilessly exposed to a financial and uh, gendered constructing of the imperial world this imperial world is created and controlled by white men while a jen to execute it the result of uh, for antony uh, antony is the development of a forced dependency on the very world executed her she was a uh, represent the particular modernist pers perspective on the suffering of a woman Jane and Antony both are distressed by the issue posed by the being a woman in a male dominated society but they each deal with their dilemmas in a unique way uh, likewise the Jane uh, uh, we described that Jane she was a headstrong woman she have the guts to uh, raise the question that that is a not a good uh, that is not a good uh, you treat a woman in that way and uh, while we see uh, when we see the antony's perspective she was even uh, don't know that this is the patriarchal structure and i am victim or a victim of that and my husband treated me was not good as uh, as well and uh, in uh, she, when she was a uh, live in a jamaica uh, jamaica and her uh, husband was uh, come there she, uh, he was not like that that uh, she was a uh, he was a live With, uh, in a jamaica because he was born and brought up in england and while uh, we uh, see that uh, jen that this sentence was uh, uh, by a jen women are supposed to be a uh, very calm and generally but women feels just as a man feel they need exercise for their faculties as a field for their efforts as as much as their brothers do they suffer from too rigid and a restraint to absolute a stent 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 station persistently as the man would suffer and it is the narrow minded in their more privileged follow creature to say that they 
out to a confine themselves to a man kind putting the in, in knitting stroking to playing and the piano and am am bridging am am bridging bags it is thoughtless to cons, uh, condemn condemn them to or laugh at them if they seek to to do more or uh, learn more then uh, custom has pronounced necessarily for their sex while sarabosi maintained the steady absence of a uh, faith in a woman ability trends the operation of of her gender ris novel depic, uh, depicts the near impossibility of success for a woman in a patriarchal world this is the strictly uh, dif- uh, strictly different kind of feminism whereas a jain has developed a many uh, resources and defenses she can uh, re- uh, really on to get her a thought her uh, attribution antony is a virtual defend uh, defendless she really protect herself like when she was visit her mother who she knows that un undependable or unloving uh, when after she was a maid and goes to her mother with love only to be rejected yet again she has a similarly episode with rochester full aware that he does not uh, she uh, he does not she asks him if a love her and invite the misery his answer of no i do not bring slavery or is radical rejection of enlightenment ideas of autonomy and liberation is grounded in the novel in antony's uh, nostalgia for the uh, culture of slavery in the slavery we can see that uh, one was for uh, antony with the patriarchal structure and uh, second for the black people the burning of calibri treats down the wicket of a peace supported by subalt uh, subalt smile and frowns in its a destruction of the boundaries of the state the fire reveals an uh, intensity of the feelings between freedmen and planters and exposes hostility towards the masoon um, that the house well had hidden Antony's perspective shape her experience of fire Antony see only smoke and tears the horrible noise like animals howling but roast perpetuating planter racism which denied the humanity of african west indies in order to justify a slavery while burn of uh, burn uh, house of that uh, um, um, masoon uh, he was not uh, sympathetic with that uh, a plantation animals and a, a human which uh, which was the leave that uh, those land a fairy death of coco a parrot of anet a mother of Anto, uh, antony uh, his father a step father masun was a clipped his wing a uh, parrot wings he clipped and a uh, 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 i uh, early said that a uh, black peoples are burn their house because of clipping his wings he was not fly and save uh, itself a parrot like that antony was a clipped by uh, by the patriarchal structure she was a try again and again but uh, and, uh, not to free herself to go go to the freedom reflecting this english male desire for a control part 2 of the novel shifts toward the perspective of the unnamed rochester is a narrative a narrative command however it is a pro- compromised by difficulty he has a- adapting to his uh, uh, new west indies environment recovering from his uh, tropical fever experiencing cultural shock rochester described his perspective as one of the confused impression having a blank in mind that cannot be a filled up uh we can uh, say that uh, rochester was a brown and brought up england he was a leave jamaica with her wife and uh, our uh, patriarchal structure we can say that uh, any girl or any woman uh, after marriage uh, uh, she can live with her husband a uh, different atmosphere different place and different people she can adjust but while uh, uh, while it was uh, on a man that they can't uh, uh, solve that in rochester case if uh, antony uh, goes to england then uh, then she was easily uh, uh, accept everything 
but while rochester was a come to jamaica she was not accepted the uh, identity of black people she was a uh, not like that atmosphere hot atmosphere who was not like uh, that uh, antony was a uh, friend was a black people all servants are black and he uh, everything he was uh, like that he was uh, uh, he wants the freedom he wants to go there england antony's desire for an uh, atrocity uh, for her own powerlessness reverses her official historical social role instead of slave holder she plays the slave and situment uh, situmentally and attract the particular anti feminist version of femini uh, femininity as a complementary mis uh, misogynism to the powerful male sadism my work citation thank you Mayuri, my question is: What do you think? As man desires for control, would Rochester, uh, would Rochester's wouldn't try to enslave Jane as did or had his behavior towards Antoinette? Uh, while we uh, uh, speak about Jane, she was a uh, had strong by that education. She was a uh, uh, employee on a Rochester house. Uh, she was a uh, uh, more Europe European in her every style. While Antony is a uh, born and brought up in a Jamaica. I I'm sorry that uh, she was born in uh, I think France, but they are live in Jamaica. So her uh, um, uh, as a third world country, uh, they are a more patriarchal structure. They know uh, she didn't know that she was on that. but uh, she was not a uh, trying uh, that uh, too confidently in her behavior or uh, in a uh, cultural conflict she was not uh, like a chain mayuri uh, what is the significance of this slavery and entrapment uh, in uh, white sergosy a uh, significance of slavery in both the way like uh, antony's perspective and black uh, uh, black people's perspective in a white sergosy uh, antony is uh, a victim of the patriarchal structure and uh, uh, one incident that one black uh, servant who was uh, continuously said that rochester you uh, don't uh, leave it uh, you you please take it uh, take me to europe that uh, also in a, a significance of slavery how he was a treat uh, his slave
morning everyone today is a third day of our presentation and my topic is for by jam policy about author john maxwell policy was born in cape town south africa on 9 february 1940 the elder of two children his mother was a primary school teacher his father was trained as an attorney but the practice uh, as such only intermittently during the year 1941 uh, 95 uh, sorry 1941 to 45 he served with the south africa force in north africa and italy to corsi parents were not of british descent the language spoke at home was english Kozi received his primary schooling in Cape Town and in the nearby town of Oxechest for his secondary education he attended a school in Cape Town run by a catholic order the Marist brother he matriculated in 1956 Kozi entered the university of Cape Town in 1957 and in 1960 to 1961 gradually successively with honors degree in english and mathematic his works the splendid disagrees age o iron waiting for the barbarians life and time michael k slow man diary of bad wear the death of jesus about novel who is the 1986 novel by south african born no novel Lute J M Corsi woven around the existing plot of Robinson Crusoe for is written from the perspective of Susan Barwon a castaway who landed on the same island inhabited by Crusoe and Friday is their adventure world already under a way like Robinson Crusoe it is a friend story unfolded by as a Barton narrative while in England attempting to convince the writer Daniel Four to help transfer her tale into popular fiction. Character Crusoe, Friday, Four, Susan Barton, Amy, Jack, Susan Jack. Themes: female experience, storytelling, primitivism, humanitarianism, slavery, fantasies of colonialism, language. symbols allegory and motifs the tongue is a symbol the tongue is one of the strongest strongest nest symbol in the novel representing the power of speech truth a narrative friday's lack of the tongue is more than a physical handicap the effect of having his tongue removed is spiritual and psychological shaping who is a who is a, as a person Repressed, uh, repressed female history is an allegory. The broad narrative of the novel, in which as unknown female castaway survives her harrowing trials, works as an inherited allegory of female version of history. It is indirect because it functions through the meta scope of the novel rather than through in the novel's central narrative. Storytelling is a motif. the construction of the story is a recurring motif is the novel how they are built who builds them and the decision that effect their meaning and the proceeding history in the construct to friday who can't tell his own story in four the uh, expert author who is known for hearing confection and turning them into the famous sensational tale the citation post colonial law
explain why this is a post-colonial novel? How can you consider Foe as a post-colonial novel? What are the reasons for that? So it means still not preparing well. This next question. What is the theme of the novel? Truth and desire uh, is the theme of main theme of the novel. The form. And then you have Nobel Prize website is good source, but uh, this uh, Grade Saver or Core Zero, they are study material sites. So we have suggested to avoid study material sites uh, in citing. And several times we have said that. Now, if you will not like understand this, then in the next semester, even in the dissertation, you will do the same. And if in case you will miss it out to correct it, then it will be in the final version also, where the external examiners will evaluate and they will say that, uh, why are you not even teaching this much simple things to your students, that you should not cite from study material side. But how can we tell them that we have told them so many times, eh? and yet they keep on doing the same thing eh, repeatedly. Yes, you can now share your thoughts.
it's visible hello everyone today is the third day of our presentation my presentation topic is racism in a white saragossa scene this is my personal information introduction the novel white saragossa scene is written by jane rice the no the social democrations between english and creole cultural identities foregrounding race and gender in the zin rice white saragossa scene in order to highlight multiple issue like gender discriminations the opposed opposite nature or a male and females how the desire of the gender character not fulfilled and how all these things lead to the madness rice need to show that race creole and white people cannot escape racism in a, in the use of a register and entity to help the reader better con connect with them the point of this uh, practice is to show registers and entity are both victim and help create a complex connection between them through conflict marriage and their individual faults white saraga society white saraga society is a novel written by jane this published in 1966 white saraga society reports on the life of a west indian community during the post m amnesians period the people whose lives are dramatized the uh, conscious belong to a various race and they are from different classes their representative destinies are shaped by conflict relations relations and stream from their reproductive repres uh, contradictory histories and social background uh, uh, so white saragossa society is a written uh, written with a special purpose as the describe the earlier life of bartha masun of jen ayer whose the original name is the antony in the novel it shows her life from the very beginning of her life how she is made to register and how her psyche gets uh, worse and worse the entire the entire process is described here and the reasons and responsible for there are also described at the length what is the racism a, a belief or a, a doctrine that inherent difference among the various human racial groups determine culture or individual achievement usually involving the idea that one's one's own race is a superior and has the right to do dominant other to treat a particular racial group is inferior or the others racism is a most commonly used name from the prejudice in which a person believe in the superiority or of what they are considered to be on their own race to others this most often takes the from belief that those with the other skin color especially darker skin colors are inferior and physically intellect intellectually morally and culturally uh, mistreating the discriminating against them because of this when used this way so racism typically refer to the system that has uh, oppressed people of color all over the world throughout history such a system is often thought to operate towards white people using the advantage that the system gives them to maintain their supremacy or over people of their co colors race and gender issue in white saraga society we see that antonity was a creole girl and the rochester was a english white man so that there are clearly a difference between them in terms of race and gender as well the novel shows you us that antony is a, a weak character and mainly because he is a female or a black person like rise antony is a sensitive and a lonely young girl who grows up with neither her mother love or nor her peers companionships eventually her husband bring her england and locks her is an attic assigning the servant woman to watch over her fearful antony is a weak from from a vivid dreams and a one do down the house race following the recently there are two races in white saraga society the black and white that that is the reason why the novel according to the white characters the black jamaicans have all the 
same physical, moral, and social attributes. Antony say about the black people, still they were quiet and there were so many of them I could hardly see any grass or trees. There must have been many so they by people but I recognize no one. They all look at the same, it was the same face. Repeat, repeated over and over, eyes gleaming, mouth half and open to shout. Rochester is a new type of colonizer. As a character, uh, we all know that British had colonized many countries and the uh, Caribbean is one of them. But uh, here, the character of Rochester is uh, shown as a different and new type of colonizer who had colonized as a Creole Antony. So here we find an uh, oppressor who neither respect Creole or nor a black ones. There is nothing like identity for a poor, poor woman as a Rochester. Destroy it is a change her name as well. By the end of the part two of the novel, where is a living a Caribbean and going to England with Antony, he utters that I hated the mountains and the hills, the rivers and the rain. She had left me trusty. This is the line meant that he does not love the Caribbean people and their lifestyle, therefore is a willing to go England and satisfy satisfy the Trust of he had identity, identity of black and white. We find here blackness appearance is is an essential identity, a foundation category. The black uh, carols and uh, this depicted as an uh, undifferential and unreasoning mass of people, physically alike, full of hatred. The black individual has no personal identity. The destructive psyche, he is thus a part, portion of whole body and non-differential people. The same objective, the desire of use to, to talk about the black carols is a, a recurrent in the narrative. The young narrator often an illustration refer to the, her mother standing in the glasses and visible to anybody who could pass by. Uh, Antony said they started something and they, they laughed. Another illusion is given by her mother and Annette two years after his second marrying, Masun Antony, second husband, and they looks also black and they look also black in the same way. In Varasai, in White Saragasasi, the British racial classification equals ex slave with the, uh, poverty or lack of economic and resources. In the novel, Black Caribbean over nothing which according to colonial history it is not a, a destruction of the past the imperialistic ideological and system we had structure of west indies and set and categorized in the uh, representations the legal caste of slaves are replaced by the race and colors and a system of uh, certifications Conse consequently Binary oppositions, which are the work in the uh, dignitaries outside and the lower level of the society, the black character deprives them of any power, consider them as a subaltern, and ultimately reduce them to silence. An unequal power between men and women. Uh, long say the dark aligned eyes, creole of pure English. Listen, so maybe, but they are not English or European either. In the place like uh, uh, Cloud Polybury, white men have the sexual uh, lines to be with uh, any woman, the offspring with a light color, since this is uh, this is land where proof of white male dominations. But the white woman with a black man, it's seen a disgrace. There was a sense related in international sex of Antony's mother with a black man that she is accidentally whiteness when she was a child her mother was a mentally ill and her husband sent her look at after by her black couple and she shows her mother surrender in the black man and kiss and into her um, racism in the white saragasasi the first, uh, the first example I want to discuss in the very beginning of the book when the horse dies, God fry a black servant test, 
stayed or entering it house is known for obeying somewhat un unroutly or in morals. After the horse died, the part of he mentioned the Lord made his no diction, no diction uh, between black and white. They are the same oh, for him. At the first glance, we may think he is uh, talking about the death of the horse. Although there is an argument for that, if we uh, compare the Lord's idea, life and death, and black to white, but there may uh, be a racial meaning behind it. The word fry attitude was for the prover to be very more by towards the white people, as he later say, this world don't last so long for a mortal man. Antony makes a friend. Man. The second example, Antony makes friend with the little girl's name Tia, who actually blind, blinded her. As Antony walked home of the day, Tia called her as a, he is a white cockroach. And when Tia talks about Antony paintings, Antony snap keep them, then you, see, you cheating niggers? Then Tia replies with the rent, how real white people they got gold of money. The Amnesians, the slavery for Jamaica was passed in 1834. So the tension between the black people and the white people were still deflecting. Inside the previous reality of the white peoples being able to overpower peoples of colors, the black peoples <laughs> were able to fight back and often use the arrangement to expose prejudice. But this is the racism in his novel. Nidhi, what is your view about racism or skin color matters in contemporary time? Is a my view my view in a skin color or racism in time. We all about agree that we are not uh, uh, like uh, not fine uh, any skin color or problem skin color problem I say about my whole presentation about the, what is the racism in white Saragossa. See, we find a black and white people uh, through the, uh, the black and white. What is the racism in white Saragossa? Racism in white side of Gaza. See, we represent the character Antony and Rochester and many other his servants to represent the racism in white side of Gaza.
hello i am nilay rathod and in post colonial studies my topic uh, for today is a uh, future of post colonial studies these are my informations uh, first first of all what is post colonialism as uh, mh abraham defines that a uh, critical analysis of the history culture literature and modes of discourse that are specific to former colonies of england spain and france and other Euro european imperial powers this studies have focused especially on the third world countries post colonial studies sometimes encompasses also aspects of british literature in the 18th and 19th century viewed through a perspective that reveals the extent to which the social and economical life represented in the literature was tactically underwritten by colonial exploitations political critics and writers uh, uh, post colonial theories analyzes how anti colonial ideas such as anti conquest national unity nigeritude pan africanism and post colonial feminism were forged through literature in orientalism uh, uh, edward said is analyzing that how social uh, society is uh, being shaped and uh, influenced by the fantasies of uh, european and uh, european racial superior superiority he uh, pioneered the branch of post colonial criticism called colonial discourse analysis professor homike baba has developed a number of the field neologism and the key concepts such as hybridity third space mimicry difference and ambivalence Uh, western colonial works like shakespeare shakespeare's the tempest brontë's jane eyre jane austen's mans mansfield park kipling's king and joseph conrad's art of darkness have been targeted of color, colonial discourse analysis and the uh, uh, most of the uh, critics that are uh, major critics are uh, like gayatri chakravarti spiva komike bhava friends fanon bill ashcroft Gungiva Thiongo, Shinoa Achebe, Lila Gandhi, Gareth Griffiths, Abiola Iril, John Maclet, Hamid Dabashi, Helen Tiffen, Khan Tarabuli, and uh, Robert Young. Why should we be concerned about future of colonialism? Here we is as in uh, the post-colonial critics. If a nation is decolonized, that doesn't always mean that I. the nation is liberated or the people are free colonialism leaves its mark behind and making the, it uh, post colonialism as jebus have noted that most of the nations and uh, its uh, languages have had their history shaped by colonialism therefore looking at the effort of colonialism in post colonial written texts not only in english but other world languages where the notion of the one language and one no, uh, one nation no longer ob obtains it is an ur urgent task gayatri spivak has claimed that there no longer there is no longer have a uh, post colonial perspective she says i think post colonial is the day before yesterday as the world and the technology is progressing it has been started to uh, it has started to pose many problems such as globalization planetary crisis like climate change thus the uh, post colonial sar um, going into the study of uh, eco criticism and globalization terrorism and so on dipesh chakravarti finds that all his readings in the uh, in theories of globalization marxist analysis analysis of capital subaltern studies and post colonial criticism over the last 25 years i have not prepared him to him for the task of analyzing the planet planetary crisis of uh, climate change some of uh, the post colonialist are engaged with new challenges like globalization eco criticism and queer studies problems like this uh, make uh, them to think about the future of post colonial studies post colonial criticism eco criticism is not a new field in post colonial studies but many believe that the post colonial studies doesn't involve environmental studies 
nor does it have to do anything with this field. Ecocriticism is a branch of literary and uh, cultural studies that looks at the representation of the more than human world. For decades now, environmental activist Vandana Shiva has explored the connection between, between colonialism and the dis destruction of environmental uh, diversity. She argues that the growth of capitalism and now translation corporation exacerbated uh, the dynamic begun under colonialism, which has destroyed the sustainable local countries, these, uh, local cultures. These cultures were also more women friendly, partly because women work also crucially tied to producing food and fodders. Other feminist environmentalists are more skeptical of such an assessment of uh, pre-colonial culture which they point out were satisfied and uh, uh, stratified and uh, patriarchal. However, they agree that questions of ecology and human culture are intricately linked, especially the so-called third world country, the state. One cannot talk about a saving environment while ignoring the needs of human lives and communities. The British cultural theorist Raymond William noted that nature is one of the most complex idea in our vocabulary, but uh, the uh, eco critics in the first uh, nine, uh, first wave, like 1960s and 90s, did not take this um, nature or uh, eco criticism term very seriously, and they didn't study this uh, term in a very uh, more complex manner. These uh, eco critics examined romantic or modern nature writers and tended to treat nature as other praising under uncorrupted pristine wilderness. However, ecocritics of uh, 21st century, as we know that um, after the, the modern times, um, technology and uh, industrialization was on its peak. So after the 21st century, it developed a more complex understanding of nature. This understanding of nature uh, foregrounds post-colonial approaches and ask how the domination of nature is entangled in intersectional power relations, relations such as gen, gender and sexuality, race, class and species. The field of post-colonial eco-criticism has offered a crucial insights regarding the way climate change is woven into uh, with its history, narrative and practices with colonial and globalization. Post-colonial ecocriticism also points that colonial, uh, coloni colonization is not just a history of human being, rather it has brought with its change of physical environment, including the movement of resources, animal and plant. This, was, uh, this change was sometimes radical at that uh, ecocritics have revealed a connection between ecocide and genocide. While the first wave, it is 1960s to 90s, ecocritics were from, uh, predominantly focused on human attachments to place post-colonial uh, theorists shifted toward concern of migration, hybridity, multiculturalism, and concepts in cosmopolitanism. Uh, Ramchandra Guha and uh, John Martinez points out that uh, it is evident uh, in uh, American environmentalism and its, its obsession with the wilderness. Rob Nixon further notes that wilderness is an obsession. Wilderness obsession is uh, celebrated in uh, American literature as well as nat natural history, where there is a durable tradition of erasing history, colonized people through the myth of the empty lands, a prodigious amount of American environmental writing and uh, criticism makes expensive gesture while remaining uh, amnesiac towards non-American geographies that vanish over the intertextual, uh, inter intention, intellectual uh, skyline. He suggests that a spatial amnesia is a one of reason why post-colonial criticism has been suspicion of a uh, earth first green criticism and therefore has not engaged with uh, questions related uh, relating to the environment. Such engagement uh, is particularly necessary given to the battles all over third world 
between environmental act act activists and big multinational companies which acting in concert with the nation nation state despoil and uh, despoil land and uh, destroys communities like uh, one of the major example is in indian example in india narmada bachao andolan led widespread protest against the project the pro protest highlighted not just the ecological damage but the displacement of thousands of tribal people uh, all across the narmada valley but the indian supreme court uh, determined that the dam will uh, the dam building will continue smart cities smart cities uh, as we think of smart cities the first um, idea will come to our mind it, it is a uh, advancement of human species but uh, here it is not the case in post colonial uh, studies like uh, smart cities are the future we know but it is alarming to the post colonialist and eco critics because uh, the uh, projects like bill gates has taken a project up in 2017 he he had bought up to uh, 24800 80, acres desertic area near phoenix arizona this future city will be named uh, belmont as he has stated in the company uh, terms that it will rely completely on smart technologies such as high speed digital network data centers high speed public wifi high tech manufacturing facilities and autonomous vehicle so here the concern of the post colonial lists are that uh, he has bought us a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, like 24000 acre nearly 80 million dollars uh, land and he will be building a city but uh, as we know that a middle class and a poor will cannot afford this uh, afford this high high tech uh, smart cities conclusion post colonial studies that not only studies uh, study colonialism and it is its impact but it also studies globalization eco criticism marxism feminism queer theory etc terrorism and islamophobia is also playing vital role in post colonial studies mohsin hamid's reluct the reluctant fundamentalist is among the best example for its insight into a way that the meaning of terrorism is defined by the narrative of counter terrorism that they are used to justify the state state's use of military force and mask the way in which the uk led war on terror serves us economy geopolitical interest at the expense of human lives in pakistan iraq and afghanistan so as we know that us has uh, uh, spent quite a lot of uh, resources on afghanistan because of its natural resources and uh, as we have seen in reluctant fundamentalist that uh, the main uh, protagonist is a muslim and uh, the main incident uh, 9/11 so he is a um, by look he is a middle east or technically an asian so the the uh, military force or rather the police uh, fbi of us is interrogating him just by the looks of his like he is a, a short a dark skin a brown or middle eastern guy so so they have they should have um, noted that uh, they sh he should be muslim so they have uh, uh, they have uh, believed that uh, they are believing that the terrorism is very much uh, in um, very much linked to the muslim community so the terrorists are well, most of the terrorists are muslim so the islamophobia is spreading more and more uh, these are citations thank you So my question is, what are the three phases of post-colonialism? Hmm. 
what are the three phases of post colonialism so technically roughly speaking a post colonialism first uh, colonization other countries uh, colonizing other countries like england india is colonized then uh, there comes a liberation or like decolonization we can say and then comes post colonialism or neo colonization in colonization other country is ruling over other countries like first world countries is ruling over third world countries in liberation the third world countries uh, first world countries uh, countries is no longer colonizing the third world countries in in post colonialism the country like india is being colonized by its own people like in, there is a term bourgeoisie so we can say that government or whatever system is there it is being colonized by them so that way we can make a, a three phases of colonization me like what is the purpose of post colonial studies the purpose of post colonial studies is to study that how the uh, former colonies or uh, other countries uh, or nation is being uh, colonized by the future uh, sorry by the rich people or multinational companies like there is a prison break uh, there is a series which is directly attacking uh, attacking on the us uh, us uh, politi politician uh, politicians and multinational companies so and in other ways post colonialist also studies the different ways of how the globalization terrorism and uh, eco criticism and uh, peer theory and all these things are um, making an impact on the people or other con countries so that way we can define it Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
second once more. Am I audible? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Well, sir, in this full screen, it is not coming as it was earlier. Achha, now it is here. Okay, so the it is the third day of this third uh, season of this presentation season. And the topic uh, that I am going to deal with today is that symbols, allegory and motifs. And along with it, I will discuss post-colonialism in four. That is the novel written in four parts by John Maxwell Kudzi. And uh, let us begin. So, so first I have put an introductory slide here uh, regarding this, using these. So using the 1719 English novel Robinson Crusoe, so it is a kind of sequel of Robinson Crusoe that was written originally by Daniel Defoe in 1719. And here we are introduced with the novel 4 in 1986 by James Quetzi. So now uh, let us take some uh, critical remark by this. According to New York Times journalist Patrick McGrath, the book's major theme, so the major theme, uh, because our slides is regarding the themes and all these motifs that are discussed in the novel so the the book's major theme concerns the linkage of language the linkage of language and power so now language is the subsidiary part of the power and the idea that those without voices cease to signify figuratively and literally so those who do not have their voice so we will be referring to this point in the further slide so let us we go ahead okay so now introduction to the term this uh, symbolism so what symbolism basically is that Historically seen, that symbolism began as a literary movement in France in 1880s. So the term first came into circulation. So it was the uh, begin in the uh, rather it was begin in the begin in the France. So uh, the, the, the the term first came into circulation in 1886 when the poet Jean Morris published the, his symbolist manifesto in the Parisian newspaper Le Figaro. In literature, now when when it came into the literature, in literature the style originates. With the 1857 publication of Charles Baudelaire's Le Flore de Moi. So it was the, also the French book again. And now, a definition of symbolism by Gigi Hafam or Geoffrey Galt Hafam and M.H. Abrams in Glossary of Literary Terms. So, what do we get uh, in, in, in this book? That symbolism, however, transforms the phenomenon into the idea, the idea into an image, and in such a way that the idea remains always infinitely active and unapproachable in the image. And even if expressed in all languages, still would remain inexpressible. So putting an idea into a particular imagery or a kind of subjective thing, it is the, the, uh, the function of the symbolism uh, speaking basically though. Now let us go ahead. So as according to this uh, novel, I have put some uh, the symbols, allegory and motifs. So let us go. Ahead. So well, uh, it was uh, previously referred to by Nehalba, though I will go a bit uh, further in the so like see the tongue is a symbol so how he, here you will find an image like uh, this is the uh, Friday this is the Friday of four not of the Crusoe okay so uh, if he would have got some tongues then uh, so the, 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 the tear is also coming out from his eyes so he might have spoken something very bitter about this colonizer like Susan Barton is there and and this uh, Crusoe is there so he was not referred like Robinson Crusoe in the novel four uh, and the slavery, the theme of, and, and let us see uh, one quotation, how it is reflected in the novel. So there should be some textual evidence like we have to refer to into the novel. So uh, how this tongue as a symbol is referred here. So I, th this quotation is by Susan Barton, that I tell myself, I talk to Friday to educate him out of darkness and silence. So as it like uh, this, uh, in, in Shakespeare's Tempest, we find this, uh, Miranda is also talk, uh, want to want to teach uh, this, this, uh, uh, this island liver, this, Kebal, Kebal like this. I tell myself I talk to Friday to educate him out of darkness and silence. But is that the truth? There are times when benevolence deserts me and I use the words only as the shortest way to subject him to my will. So teaching means to subject one to your will. Like here she is openly referring to that fact. And at such times I understand why Crusoe preferred not to disturb his muteness. I understand that is to say why a man will choose to be a slave owner. Do you think less of me for this confession? So teaching itself is slavery or, or enslavement, like the people, those who are teaching or those who are being taught by us. And now the another symbol is the 
island is a symbol so island uh, th uh, let us go in this directly in the quotation so how in the novel the island is taken as a symbol implicitly though not directly or ostentatiously it seemed to me that all things were possible on the island so it is uh, 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 spoken by uh, this uh, susan barton again so it seemed because we know that these three perspectives are coming rather the first in the four parts there are first is susan barton second is the Cru cruzo and the third one is Friday. Though Friday does not speak, but from the perspective, some uh, soliloquy type of things are referred to in the novel. Also. So it seemed to me that all things were possible on the island, all tyrannies and cruelty. So first, let us uh, go in the second word. The island in four works instead to interrogate and deconstruct that classic island symbolism. See, in Kaiji's novel, the simple life that Crusoe leaves is shown to be tedious and boring, rendering his existence absurd. So how the people, the island is generally seen like you can do whatever you like in, in, in freedom and in, in all the things are related to island. But in the post structuralist way of putting island as a symbol, here it is, it, it denotes to the boring and rendering this tedious and boring life of those who are living on the island. So how? And and see, and, and if, and let us coming down to the quotation, we can find this. And if in despite of what was possible, we lived at peace with another. Surely this was proof that certain laws are known to us elsewhere, or else that we had been following the prompting of our hearts all this time, and our hearts had not betrayed us. So it is the theme. And the third one is the storytelling as a motive. You will find see how why, why this why this motive is coming, or recurring motive is coming. Why? Because when you are uh, taken back from speaking then you are not able to tell your story. And even if you are able to tell your story, given ample freedom, so here given ample freedom, not being taken. So then you will feel nobody is there, nobody, the, especially the elite class, if we are speaking in the context of this bourgeoisie and, 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 and lumpen pro, uh, this proletariat, uh, then we find like this, you are free to tell your story, but there is no one, there is no one to listen to it. Okay. And so uh, storytelling is a motive. So she argues against this plan. She means Susan Barton. To sensationalize her life events in favor of telling the story for the man who has no voice, the questions, sir, the man here is the Friday. The question, so here I am putting the Friday because we have to refer to the Friday of Koizhi's novel, not of that, the Robinson Crusoe. Uh, the questions surrounding storytelling are brought up in the first chapter and continue through, uh, uh, through to the final passage. So here I have taken the quotation from the novel also, like when I reflect on my story, I seem to exist only as the one who came. The one who witnessed, the one who longed to be gone. So why one one here is Susan? That why did she long to be gone? Like uh, there can be some uh, hideous things on the island that we will refer to again. Okay. So the, a being without substance, a ghost wizard. So here is the existential reference coming here in the novel. Like a being without substance, there is. It means that there is no meaning at all in one's being here on the planet, in one's existence. A ghost beside the true body of Crusoe. Is that the fate of all storytellers? Like you have to get devoid of yourself and narrating a story. And fourth theme is that cannibalism is a motive. So discussion on of Friday's alleged cannibalism and other cannibals recurs throughout the novel. Okay. So now the the idea of cannibalism works as a motive in the novel to show the fearful mindset of the white colonizer toward a person of African origin. So it is the simple thing that you colonize somebody and you will have to live in constant fear whether these people revolt in morning and we have to leave uh, this, this country, the colonized country at the evening. So just metaphorically speaking like that. And, and that is why perhaps this Winston Churchill was a bit afraid of him, Gandhi, and he called him the naked fakir of India. And so many metaphors or, or, or these allusions were given to him and, and many other freedom fighters by the colonizers that were Britishers on India before we got freedom. So the idea, or rather this Susan's irrational fear. So why sometimes it is irrational fear? Because uh, the fear that comes from uh, the subjugation of people will, will live further in your mind, being it an irrational or the irrational one. So, reflects the broader fears of a colonial slaver society. So it is not so if you are occupying somebody, then you will have to live in a constant fear. So you cannot be free like, oh, we, we have occupied them. Now we are free or we are free to rule ourselves on them. Now you have to live in a constant fear on them. And uh, the, the one quotation is also very uh, worthy to be cited here. Like the less they seem to me like fields waiting to be planted, the more like tools. Like, see, this fields. Fields means the land that one colonizer is colonizing for his uh, one's own sake. So fields waiting to be planted. It means fields waiting to be 
taken money out of or taken benefits out of the more like tombs the more like tombs they, there is the possibility of revolt and there will people uh, revolt and they will kill each other or rather they will kill us also the, 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 perhaps our tombs may be uh, growing there and not be putting okay so the replaced female history the concern of feminism is also coming like the broad narrative here is also discussed and, and the second point like without the female perspective robinson crusoe is a masculine colonial fantasy because the eurocentricism that is being unconsciously but has put by this uh, this daniel defoe in, in his novel robinson crusoe so that is why this quotation is taken like without the female's perspective so here what happens in the four uh, there is the female perspective the majority uh, of the the major part of this novel is occupied by with this susan buttons that is the feminine perspective of the novel or feminine point of view to narrate a story like it's possible to see that a masculine fantasy such as robinson crusoe is only possible through the suppression of other views the female the subaltern like the subaltern term is also recurring like this and two quotations i have taken like i would rather be the author of my story than have lies told about me so once again the importance of your storytelling is being highlighted here like i would rather be the author of my story than have lies told about me that is why the storytelling of our own is necessary rather if somebody else tells there is the chance of promiscuous description of ourselves and of the things also to live in silence is to live like the whales like to deep at the surface of the ocean coming out only uh, uh, only for a while an introduction to post colonialism the post colonial studies is so here the glossary of literary terms is also again referred to that the critical analysis of the history culture literature and modes of discourse that are specific to former colonies of england spain france and other european imperial powers so european imperial powers are again referred to like because they were uh, colonizers uh, uh, about this asian and, and, and other 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 parts of this continent uh, so let us go into second uh, this quotation uh, or this point in for cruzos authority is inflicted on friday in for what happens cruzos authority is inflicted on friday susan even suspects that it was cruzo who cut out friday's tongue okay so the cutting of the tongue is also the good symbol that you make a you are making rather the people voiceless you are suppressing their voice just because you want to narrate uh, your supremacy over them in the uh, this narrative story and, and another symbol like this uh, glass comes in the novel like in the sunglass what happens that from your side you are able to see the things clearly from your side you are able to see the things clearly whereas the people who are standing other side of the glass that is the outside they will not be able to know what is happening within side so it was the this propaganda of colonizers that they were doing something but they were showing something and they were having something within themselves and the, it is also good symbol and here it is entirely possible that cruzo was a slave master in his former life and was transporting a cargo of slaves across the atlantic when the ship was wrecked Kaizi pulls back the romantic shroud from Defoe's novel by re recontextualizing the character of Robinson Crusoe. So this uh, romanticizing uh, scenery of island in this Robinson Crusoe was pulled back by Kaizi's uh, Kaizi's this four. Now I have taken another quotation like four. So the damage, the pain of Crusoe's colonialist behavior, and sets the characters of a journey to rediscover the voice that was stripped away from Friday by the colonial powers. Okay, so. Because of the post-colonial voice, how this post-colonial voice is coming in the novel four that I have taken into context, like the quotations from the novel that alludes to the post-colonial response to Euro uh, response to Eurocentricism in Robinson Crusoe. Uh, here are some quotations, though some are overlapping each other. That's fine. Though. But uh, the, the very first, these all are spoken by Susan Barton. Okay, Susan Barton is speaking all these things throughout the novel. So the but those whom we have abused, we customarily grow to hate. So it is the post-colonial voice, like those whom, uh, by the way, those whom we abused, we customarily grown to hate. Like we are colonizing somebody, and now we are hating them. I would rather be the author of my story that had lies told about me. That was earlier discussed. Now the third one, he is the child of his silence. So it is like to tell somebody that he is the child of his silence. Well, it is not so. The, he, is, he, he here is this uh, Friday. Is, uh, Friday is not the child of his silence. But he was made so by cut, by by cutting his tongue by perhaps by Crusoe as referred to uh, by Susan Barton. And third is the cannibals are no less dull than Englishmen. So it was the time when written. The cannibals are no less dull than Englishmen. So this simply 
uh, the comparison is happening between cannibals and Englishmen because here we have to see because cannibals are generally deemed as uh, a, a very inferior to uh, a very inferior uh, by Englishmen. But here this comparison comes like cannibals are no less dull than Englishmen. It means that at some point Englishmen are also, are also uh, fallacious and, and uh, fallacious and dull as compared to these cannibals uh, who are living on the island like the Friday here we say. So he does not know what freedom is. He means Friday again. Friday, uh, Friday does not know what freedom is. Freedom is a word, less than a word, a noise. One of the multitude of noises I make when I open my mouth. So uh, again, this feminine voice is delivered to here by Susan Barton. Okay, then let us move ahead. Here is the conclusive, uh, this, this con uh, conclusive part. Like, uh, and I have taken some uh, quotations. So the Nobel Prize in literature on 2nd October 2003 was was granted was rather conferred to this uh, our, our 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 novelist uh, Jem Koizzi for what uh, who who means Jem Koizzi who in innumerable jaisis portrays the surprising involvement of the outsider so he becomes the voice of subaltern the post colonial voice is also narrated in all in, in all his novels like uh, and here uh, Louis MacLeod in do we in do we necessity here is the name of his work Louis MacLeod has something significant to say like like uh, do we necessity become puppets in a story and another uh, thing comes like Susan psyche so from the novel she wants to narrate the world and ends up as somebody else's first character so she wants to tell her story but she ends up being a character of this uh, Robinson Crusoe's novel or rather first novel by Kajji Nadine Godima in his preface to It seems there is a disconnected one that is perhaps internet is disconnected. In that. I will have to check that connection. Yes, so by that time, the other students can put their questions there. Okay. okay, you can sit here and give answer by the time he connects. Is it connected or no? no? So you can sit here and give the answer. First is Nidhi. So, Nira, my question is, uh, uh, according to you, what is the post-colonialism in folk? See, the very first thing, that the post-colonial views that I have taken some here in the novel, like there were some quotations in that. And, and the whole or the major, major part of my slides were there on the post-colonialism. Like, as this... Uh, this this uh, gardener uh, gardener said in, the, in this last previous critical assertion like his voice was post colonial and many critics uh, uh, were thinking of whether we can refer to him uh, as being the post colonial uh, identity or rather the voice that represents the post colonialism in his novels or not so it was still the question but we find ample references that he is the represent uh, representative of this post colonialism there thank you
you know, my question is, what difference would it make if Friday was the narrator of the story himself? And second, uh, can we really rely on the narration of the masters, uh, uh, narration of black from the perspective of white? So your question, what difference would it make if Friday was the narrator himself? Okay, it is the first one. Can we rely on the narration of black slave from the perspective of white master? Yeah, the very good question is asked because here the first part if you want to answer like what difference would it make if Friday was the narrator himself? So he will generally tell about his sufferings. The Friday being a Friday of the colonized. Okay, so he will narrate the sufferings that were afflicted upon him by these colonizer people. The Susan Barton is there here representatively and this, uh, this Robinson Crusoe himself. So he will narrate his uh, pain. In words of him, if he's given the pain and words to speak and write, it is. And the coming down to the second part, like, can we rely on the narration of black slave from the perspective? Of, well, we have to look with critical lens, and that is why these cultural studies are there to read absence over the presence. Uh, so we can, we have to rely. We have to rely, but with ample criticism. Like, why this type of like uh, the things are narrated, and and another novel like this, uh, I forgot the name, but in this. A Jane Austen's novel, the reference comes that there is a field a person is having, and the person is having ample amount of uh, this plant plantation in that. So it was again the Jamaica was referred there. Jamaica perhaps like this this colonist uh, colonized country or the island. So here then we can say okay this uh, landlord who was an Englishman he is rich, but now uh, on whose cost he is rich on the slaves cost he is rich. So the narration we have to uh, like uh, consider in a better way with the ample criticism. We have to be critic criticizing on each and every line on that. So we, we can, uh, you know, this um, not wholly, but just uh, partly rely on this narration of black people given by these white ones, white colonizers, because the Eurocentricism is also there in this Robinson Crusoe. So that is why perhaps uh, this, uh, the Jane Coetzee thought to write this, uh, uh, narrate this uh, uh, for, uh, uh, again. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you.
two on the screen. Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm going to present uh, white surrogacy and uh, Caribbean history in the paper of the post-colonial studies. Uh, I would like to start my presentation with a quote by Jane Rice that uh, today I must be very careful because I have left my armor today. Uh, points to see uh, the author of the novel about the novel uh, Jamaican history, 1830s and Emancipation Act, 1833 Sla Slavery Abolition Act. Jane Reyes was a novelist, a short story writer, essayist, and in her life and in her writing, the author of post-colonial works such as White Saragossi met adversity inflicted and self-inflicted with an unflinching eye. Uh, this one is a quote by James Wood. Uh, her works is Good Morning uh, Midnight and White Saragossi and uh, Voyage in Dark. Jane uh, Reyes was uh, born in... Uh, Born as Ella Gwendoline Rees Williams, the fourth of five children came from the equivalent of uh, white aristocracy. Uh, white Saragossi is a prequel of a uh, feminist uh, novel, uh, uh, Jane Eyre, uh, written by Charlotte Bronte. Uh, white Saragossi is written in 1966, divided into three parts. This one is a prequel of Charlotte Bronte's. Uh, in which fe a female uh, is seen as a slave to men. It deals with uh, feminism, mixed race population. Uh, the setting of the novel is uh, Caribbean island, Jamaica. Uh, uh, it, in this novel, woman as uh, woman is uh, woman is seen as rejected wife, uh, which turned into implied madness. And uh, the novel deals with colonialism also. Uh, the prequel to Jane Eyre is uh, told in three voices uh, in which uh, Antoinette uh, Causeway is a white creole. Historian and poet Camo uh, has described plantations as slavery culture as a race founded and race founded. The Jamaican history uh, starts with uh, uh, the, the very well-known uh, Christopher Columbus in 1494. The Columbus uh, uh, first sighted uh, the island Jamaica on Caribbean Sea. The history of Jamaica is rich and vibrant one. Jamaica's history has been uh, poetically composed by Howard Pyle, who states Jamaica is like many other of the West Indian island, is like a woman with a history. Uh, the original inhabitants of uh, this, uh, this island is the original inhabitants of Jamaica are believed to be the uh, Arawaks and Tainos. Uh, these these two thing. This two is the uh, main uh, uh, call, uh, civilized person there who came from South America 2,500 years ago. Uh, they named the island uh, Jama X. They they the the pronunciation is the same Jamaica, but it starts with X, which meant the land of wood and water. The Arawaks were mild and simple people by nature. Physically, they were light brown in color, short and well-shaped with a coarse black hair. Flat. The slave trade in uh, the Caribbean uh, history. The English settlers concerned themselves with the growing crops that would easily be sold in England. So there was the uh, English uh, settlers who used to uh, slave the the growing people there. The Jamaican history is uh, sugar industry. Uh, in, in Jamaica, tobacco, indigo, and coca were soon gave way to sugar, which became the main crop of the island. 
the sugar industry grew so rapidly that the 57 sugar estates on the island in 1673 grew nearly uh, for 430 by 1739 enslaved africans filled the uh, large labor force uh, required for the industry the slave trade became a popular and a profitable venture for the colonialist uh, so in the in the caribbean history there was a uh, sugar uh, sugarcane uh, uh, farms and uh, the sugar industry were grew in by that time the colonists were impressed with the performance and endurance of the africans as well as the fact that um, um, african labor was cheaper and more promising they continued to ship africans to the west indies to be sold to planters who forced them to work on sugar plantations uh, the slavery abolition act in 1833 which was uh, for uh, the uh, Uh, given by the British colonies to the these uh, slaves, uh, but uh, it uh, took a uh, while, a lot of time. It, in uh, 18, 18, uh, in 1835, around it rose, and the the final uh, declaration was given by uh, uh, that uh, that president of uh, British. Emancipation Act, when full of emancipation came in 1838, a system that had been tried and tested in Caribbean since the 16th century came to an end. Slavery had within itself the seeds of its own destruction, whether because slaves resisted it or whether the emergence of the new style of capitalism rendered slavery or incompatible with British industrial society, or whether the emerging of uh, philanthropy with uh, A vigilance, a religion helped to frame, frame an ideology that was astonishing to slavery. Emancipation in 1888 by a group of five black Jamaicans who pointedly denied with participation. Uh, White Saragosso Sea, uh, the the novel's title White Saragosso Sea is derived from a uh, 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 Saragosso part of the Atlantic Ocean in northern uh, Caribbean island. Cut out from the oceans, current cities relatively became become and harbor drift of saragasm seaweed. In a, a rice novel, the saragasso sea is a symbol of what separates Antoinette Causeway and Mason Rochester, and Edward Fairfax Rochester. Desperate colonial and imperial histories and experiences, uh, Rochester's uh, racism and disdain of the mixing cultural. Cultures, his abhorrence and fear of the tropical landscapes, and this this opposition of the Antoinette. The novel's main theme is about racism, uh, the acceptance of culture, and how the the uh, the black people were uh, uh, tortured there by uh, British colonies. These are my sources. Thank you. So, as Bachelor, my question is: Is there any changes in the situation of slaves after the Slavery Abolition Act was implemented in the novel as well as in the general? There, there is definitely uh, the change after this uh, Slavery uh, Abolition Act, and uh, uh, when uh, this act came, this was for uh, the people's. Uh, Uh, the people were concerned about it that uh, they they get uh, they get uh, the uh, they get the uh, free from uh, the, that slavery. So it came in eighty in in nineteenth century. It came uh, in the uh, side of slaves.
so vachalata my questions to you is that can you find any relevant text or any relevant literary text okay in indian literature written in any indian language uh, or any be it in, a, in an english language as well that's uh, that have some similarities with white sarga sosi novel so do you have any reference of any indian text that have some similarity like with this novel white sarga sosi thank you no actually i don't find any text relevant to the white sarga sosi but i i'll definitely said that there were some uh, uh, politicians we can say who worked for this uh, 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 caste discrimination and class discrimination in indian uh, literature and indian nation Okay. Uh, uh, very quick feedback to uh, your presentations. Okay. Mm, uh, first one was by Janvi, yes, and it was quite well. Uh, the source was very good. That was comparing Fano and Gandhi. So a good article was referred uh, in violence and agency. How they are dealing in the post-colonial or freedom struggle. Uh, Fano and Gandhi. There was also good reference to Ambedkar also. and that was a good uh, good slides were there good content was also given which was uh, speaking about all these three characters uh, and their struggle so ambedkar had uh, on one hand the british to fight with and the, on the other hand there was internal caste problem also so uh, that that position is a very very complex position uh, that ambedkar had to uh, battle with uh, for fano it was a race and so the outsider were the uh, were they were having a prominent race so it was easier one even for gandhi similarly it was uh, easy because he was not dealing with caste issues he supported uh, the caste structure as it is so that was a good source that was uh, referred uh, and presented uh, well also but question answers were not given properly uh, answers we were not able to give properly so Uh, that happened in couple of presentations so you are able to get a good source and prepare a good slides also but when question answer happens your understanding is lacking so you can't justify that point in a proper way uh, zil presented well on bollywood cinema and the problem uh, there about the women as a subaltern identity yes, and well argued and it was well cited also uh, kushbu presented also quite well on symbolic uh, reading in white saraga sosi uh, that source was good but there was only one source which you referred to you have to refer to several sources uh, when you prepare your thing so one good article or something good you found and you only rely on that only for everything that is not fair you have to make something out of those things which should be yours also and even your answers were not up to the mark you need to work on that proper understanding so that you can give answers in a proper way uh, mayuri also presented well on white saraga sosi it was also well prepared one and well presented uh, nehalba presented on this some of the errors we have seen earlier also about citation and other things question answer still problem so you are not able to like justify the things in a proper way you have to keep on answering many times people don't know the answer but at least they keep on talking something so that at least you can't leave the question without uh, answering it something you have to say uh, about that uh, nidhi uh, on white saraga sosi uh, was presented also content was good uh, in the slides and well presented uh, nilay is also was good on future of post colonial studies uh, which was the only one taken in this uh, section uh, and smart cities was a good idea which was also connected well uh, with this idea smart cities uh, point and questions were also answered very well 
Nirav uh, on four. Huh? Coach says four. Uh, uh, one source was very well cited. Huh? This Tehran's visual artist, Kamran Behroz. Huh? So that was a very good site that was referred. Wherein uh, he is he's a visual artist. So with the help of painting and installation, he is working on, on his website. You will find one separate column on installation also. Huh? This time semester uh, one students were there in the team of installation but they were not able to do properly so this uh, artist uh, kamran behruz uh, is also a renowned installation artist visual artist and his work uh, decolonizing friday was cited so that was a good resource uh, there avoid citing material sites uh, which we have suggested to others so summary notes are cited there so that should be avoided uh, in this uh, Vachalta also was a good topic about Caribbean history. Right? So background history of Caribbean and this text, how it deals uh, with that. That was a good topic that you have uh, selected uh, for the presentation. This question also was good. You can like look for the text, uh, retellings. Uh, these are retellings uh, of a classical text. So whether in Gujarati literature or Hindi or any another one, are there any such literary texts uh, where the retelling is happening with a specific purpose, not just to tell a story only, that becomes fan fiction. So there is a difference between fan fiction, which also extends the story with the same character or retells, or with any of the insight, like post-colonial insight or feminist insight, how those stories are uh, retold also, that can be uh, seen also. Okay, so with this, we end this session uh, and wish you all the best for tomorrow's uh, presentation.